Hello everybody, this is Hari Swaminathan from OptionTiger.com and I wanted to announce a new course for the Udemy community. Uh, I often get emails uh, asking whether I have either a day trading uh, service, a trading idea service or a swing trading. Now there are several challenges with a day trading service especially for Udemy community because uh, we are unable to send more than four announcements for any course in a particular month and that goes for all courses and therefore by definition uh, it's not possible to uh, send out day trading alerts or trading ideas but with swing trading a little bit more is possible and so I wanted to explore this particular course and also the course format and how the swing trading ideas will work now this course is going to start in October specifically October 7th so let's just jump into the details and see what this course format and all the details look like in the next slide this course is a special course and it has a special course structure and a format and it's only available for the Udemy community so for all my Udemy students this course also includes all the videos from the swing trading course which is also on Udemy the way the trading ideas will work is that there will be a total of about 8 to 10 trade ideas every month and so this structure is going to be repeated in following months so there'll be one uh, specific course for November and December and so on the dates for those courses uh, will be announced later but for each month there will be 8 to 10 trade ideas and Two trade ideas will be posted every Sunday in that month by 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So after looking at the futures open at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, we'll review the trade ideas for that week. And the trade ideas will have the rationale for the trade, what are the technical patterns that are telling us that this trade is going to be a good one, and what are the uh, possible future adjustments. Now it's important to note that I will not actually be doing adjustments. I will not be able to show the adjustments because Udemy is not a real time platform and I'm unable to send more than four announcements uh, per course. And so the four weekly announcements will be the trade idea videos. And these videos will have the complete rationale and they will also discuss the possible adjustments if things go well or if things go badly on that particular trade. What are the things that we can do? But students should follow the trading techniques as outlined in section one of this course. Now the section one of this course will include all videos from the swing trading course and therefore you will have the methodology, the approach for all these trades and then section two will contain all the trade ideas as and when they come out every Sunday. So hope all of this is clear. Basically we are talking about a special course uh, format for the Udemy community. It's going to be a trade idea service and every Sunday for four Sundays in a month, I'll be announcing two or three trade ideas. Now it could be three, it could even be one. If there are no trading opportunities, then it might just be one. But for the most part, we're going to try to shoot for eight to 10 trade ideas per month. And each of these trade time frames will be anywhere from one week to maybe two weeks or three weeks. Although we might choose an options expiry series that is out in the... Uh, in, in the two month range or maybe six week range but the goal of the trade is to hold it for about one to two weeks at the maximum and once we get our move we want to exit so all of these parameters will be given to you the expiry series uh, the option uh, strike price itself the stock and why do we think it's a good trade what are the possible adjustments if things go wrong or if things go right and what are the technical indicators that are pointing towards this particular trade idea being a good trade so hopefully this is clear and in the following videos you will see the entire swing trading course videos uh, in this in this course also now what follows is a video about the introduction to that swing trading course so this is explaining the swing trading approach and why this is a good approach for most people because it requires a somewhat hands off approach and therefore uh, we are also able to leverage that and give our trade ideas once a week every Sunday maybe two or three trade ideas two or three of the best trade ideas will be uh, given every Sunday so hopefully this is clear please uh, hang on and watch the following video which gives you the introduction on the swing trading approach itself
Thank you. Swing trading is especially ideal for busy people and or people in other countries because there's not a need to monitor your positions that closely. And so if you're playing the US markets from any other geographical location, then swing trading is ideal. Let's now jump into the swing trading approaches and what exactly is swing trading and how we can benefit from swing trading. So swing trading has many meanings depending on who you talk to. Uh, in general, I would like to think that swing trading is something that is in between day trading and more, much more longer term buy and hold kind of positions. And so it falls right in the middle with a trade time frame of perhaps uh, anywhere from two to four to eight weeks or so, perhaps even a little bit longer. Like I said, everyone has a different meaning for swing trading. But what we want to do is take advantage of the high and low cycles that the market provides every now and then. And so markets do work in cycles and therefore we want to take advantage of the low points or the high points, depending on if you want to go long or short uh, the market or the stock. So in this swing trading system, what you're going to see is a set of indicators and we're going to customize some of these indicators so that we can get a higher probability entry into these trades. And once again, it's important to remember that there are hundreds of indicators. So what I show here is not by any means the gold standard or anything like that. You can use any indicators that work for you. I'm going to show some of the stuff that I work with and which has uh, proved uh, pretty good in, in the past. You, you can have many other indicators as well. Uh, if you're used to some indicator that you like, uh, by all means, uh, you can use it. What, I, what I'll show you in the customization is changing some of the default values so that you can get a higher probability entry. And so if you're working with an indicator that's perhaps outside of the list that uh, is being shown in this course, then perhaps you can look at some of the default values and see if uh, any customization is required. And always you, are, you need to test all these customizations on paper money first because you need to understand the dynamics of the default values or the values that you change and make sure that it works for your trading uh, environment. Day trading and swing trading are in general chart based pattern based systems. So these are what you call technical trading systems. And while we use options and option spreads in this uh, uh, swing trading approach, uh, the same charts can be used for stocks. It can be used for ETFs. And in fact, it can be used for futures as well or commodities, anything. And, it, and these kinds of chart based systems are applicable to all markets and all countries. Because technical analysis at the end of the day is about crowd behavior. And so that does not change regardless of which market you're working in. So knowledge of options and spreads is a big plus, but it's not required if you're a stock trader. So you can just use the technical analysis part of this uh, course and use it for stocks or ETFs or any other commodity or futures, anything like that. So first of all, we need to understand how the market and the stock trends are. This is probably the biggest critical factor for swing trading. We saw in day trading that trade entry is the critical part, but in swing trading, it's the market analysis and the stock trend analysis that takes more importance than your trade entry. We'll also see why the period after earnings are the best times for swing trading. Well, when we look at various stocks, we'll, we'll understand why uh, the post earnings is a great time. So if a company reported earnings uh, last week, then this week would be a good time to get into a swing trading position. So we'll see why that's the case. And of course, finally, we look at various trade management issues, risk control techniques, and all the different things that we need to be prepared with in case the trade goes against us. Let's briefly talk about some of the best practices that would be good to deploy when you talk of swing trading approaches. First of all, there are hundreds of indicators, as we said, but we have to keep things simple. So the indicators that you understand best are the best indicators to work with. So keep things simple, no more than three or four indicators because you don't want to get into an paralysis through analysis, that kind of a situation. So you want to use the best indicators that you understand and use them in the best possible way so it helps your trading decision. And secondly, you need to choose your time frame based upon your situation. So if you do have time to look at the markets, then perhaps you can go for a shorter time frame, maybe two weeks or three weeks uh, or four weeks. But if you don't plan to look at the markets and you want to just take 
intervention steps at various points, then you want to go out a little bit. And I would say to be safe in a swing trading approach, going out two to three months out makes sense. And for many reasons. One is, of course, you have more time to deal with your trade. Two is every three months we know that every company reports earnings and therefore the earnings cycle is going to disrupt your swing trades. And therefore, you want to make sure that you're out of the trade before this whole earnings cycle comes up again and with the potential to disrupt your trade. So two to three months is nice. Two months is great. And so you want to keep it to that time frame so that you have enough time. And at the same time, you, you're giving the trade uh, a chance to play out successfully before the next big disruptor comes in, which is the earnings reports. Since it will be starting with either long calls or long puts, you want to choose periods of low volatility. And this is another reason why post earnings is the ideal time for swing trades, because we know that the volatility crush happens right after the earnings event. And that's when it, it becomes really low volatility. The volatility is completely normalized for any stock. And therefore, it's an ideal time to get into a long call or a long put. Granted, we might change it to a spread at a later point, but at least to begin with, that's a great time to enter into a long position, long call or a long put. Now, post earnings is also another ideal time for swing trading because the earnings report actually sets the tempo or sets the sentiment for the stock for the next three months. So if a company did come out with very good earnings, you can be sure that the next two to two and a half months, the trend is going to be up. And on the flip side, if the company did not report well, then the stock is going to struggle over the next two to three months until the next earnings report comes and perhaps changes the sentiment for that stock. So post earnings is a great time to get into these trades. And when I say post earnings, I think you'll need to give at least a few days after the earnings report itself, because there is quite a bit of volatility right after the earnings event. So if some stock reported earnings yesterday, it's not a good uh, uh, idea to get into it today. Uh, rather, you give it about two to three days or maybe four days. And once you see that the stock is settling in, then that's the real ideal time to get into a swing trade. And finally, when it comes to risk management, we are going to look at a few different techniques, conditional orders, trailing stops and things like that. Especially if you can't monitor your positions, then it's uh, wise to uh, put in some of these techniques. And of course, we look at various other smaller tactics as well, like go in half size and then double uh, take profits on half sides or protect your profits with a spread and things like that. Finally, going to give a secret sauce here because if you are converting it to a spread, then there is a way to totally reduce your losses or protect your profits. And it's a great technique, especially when your long position has gotten into a spread. And therefore, now you want to be able to either protect your profits or stop your losses. So that we'll be covering as well in this course.